yes, I am wearing the same shirt as my other video. Hey everyone, this is Mary over here at Images on the Page, and today I will be doing my Sapphicathon wrap up. So Sapphicathon was a readathon that happened from December 14th to December 28th, and you were the focus was to read only female female relationship books or ones that featured queer main characters and stuff. It was really cool. They had this whole bingo board with like 16 different things that you could try to read. And I mean, it was just fun. Uh, I decided to participate this year and I only ended up reading like a small, and they ended up finishing, com like completing two books. I started two other ones and I read like maybe at most 550 pages. Um, so um, I actually just talked about a video where I was ranting about the pressures and I'm, I probably shouldn't put my page count in there because that makes it seem like it's a competitive thing and it's more just keeping myself accountable like I don't know how many up uh, what other like how much other people read like someone some people could have finished the complete 16 challenges by reading 16 separate books which is awesome if they did that's so crazy they had to like oh I don't I couldn't imagine like they must have not slept to be able to finish that and so or been more strategic like read some things on or listen to th some things on audiobook I mean, if they did, that's amazing. So I, that my stuff that I was talking about was not, like, the two books finished and stuff was not a competitive way to say, like, here's how I stack up among everyone else. The thing is, is that we read the female, female books, that we talk about them. And so that's what I'm going to do. So I finished Lambs Can Always Become Lions by Charlotte Ann Hamilton. And I finished Thaw by Elise Springer. Um, so I did end up finishing Lambs Can Always Become Lions first, um, mostly because it was just a smaller book. It was more like a novella, and it was the Robin Hood retelling where Robin Hood was female instead of male, and she and Lady Marian are in a relationship. And I really enjoyed that one because I, Robin Hood is one of my favorite subjects I don't know like favorite legends um I think all the adaptations are really cool the Disney movie was one of my favorite Disney movies um I was just really interested in, in seeing that I also really like that I mean especially because it was so short it was not a coming out story it was already like an established relationship they were already together they just Robin Hood and Marion Lady Marion were kind of separated because of the circumstances Robin Hood was on the run because she was stealing from the rich, giving to the poor, and Lady Marion ended up kind of being her inside person who would find out about all these shipments and things. I did really enjoy it. I think I gave it maybe a three out of four star, or a three out of five stars, um, just because while I really did enjoy it, I wasn't like, even though I did really enjoy it, I, it wasn't a five to me because I wasn't like... Five to me is mean I'm very emotionally invested when like bad things happen like I cry or I scream or I throw books so but if you do like Robin Hood and stuff and it is a very short read it is really easy to read um, oh I remember the reason why I only gave it three out of five and not four out of five is because I think one of the side characters of Robin Hood's Merry Men might have been um, non-binary because the author did use they them pronouns but it got a little confusing because then she would switch from they them to he he or she pronouns depending on the character so I was never quite sure if they were talking about like the group as a whole plural they them or the non binary character they them so that was kind of a little frustrating um, I would have loved to have one of them to have been actually non-binary and go by the they them pronouns that would have been awesome, but it was just, it was really confusing because, like, within the same paragraph it would happen. And the context didn't, like, establish that they, them was the specific person or the group. So it was just, it was really confusing. So other than that, so do be, like, if you do read it, just be aware of that's one of those things that happens. 
And then the other book I read was Thaw by Lee Springer that I also gave that one three stars. I did really enjoy it. I was really um, interested in the story because Abigail was asexual and that is my sexuality. And she ends up in a romantic relationship with Gabrielle, who, as far as we know, at least in the beginning, is a sexual being. Someone who does feel sexual attraction or wants sex. And so it was just kind of really interesting to see how asexuality was defined in the book and how the character represented it, and how they dealt with that in a relationship. I did really like the definition of the book. It was just that this person, I think the way they phrased it was like they could feel sexual attraction, they just don't personally want sex. And that is how I personally kind of define it. And like asexuality, like everything else, there's like this massive spectrum of like little different ways that you can define it. There's some people who are asexual and aromantic where they don't want a romantic relationship and they don't want sex. And there's some people who do want that life partner but don't want sex. Um, or there's some people who might still feel sometimes rarely sexual attraction but they don't want to do anything about it. Like there's hundreds, okay maybe that's an exaggeration, but there's many many ways of being asexual and just because one person identifies one way and the other another person identifies another way within asexuality does not make it wrong for anyone there's not one correct way if if it is something that you're interested in finding out more about or wondering if you are um asexuality.org or aven is a great resource even or if you just think that or if you are a partner or friend of someone who is asexual because they have different, they have like where you can do chats, um, sections for people who are like supports, systems, allies of asexual people. It is a wonderful resource. I would definitely check it out and I will put the link in the description box below so it's easy to find. That one, so anyway, back to Thaw. Um, one of the reasons I gave it three out of stars, even though I really did enjoy it, was because it did that like thing where she's like, well, I don't know how she's gonna, like, um, Abigail was worried about telling Gabrielle about her sexuality and it caused a whole bunch of stress in their relationship, which I mean, of course it will. And I understand, but I mean, it, I feel like stuff like that, it's better to be upfront because if you get really invested and then either continue to hide it or try to force yourself in different ways, it, it just creates this problem like it did in the book. So, spoiler, 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 I'll put a big thing up, and when I stop talking, I'll put another thing up so you can skip to it. So there's a part before Abigail tells Gabrielle that they, that she is asexual, that they do have sexual relations with each other. And then afterwards, um, and it goes fine, like, Abigail doesn't feel anything bad, it's not. For her, it is consensual. Because she, this is something she does want to do for Gabrielle. And there it comes to a part where, like, Gabrielle has orgasmed and Abigail hasn't. And Gabrielle is just, like, wants to do something for her. And she's like, that's not necessary. This was for you. But, I mean, it creates, later on, it creates this tension and, like, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but it creates this big problem, especially for Gabrielle, because she feels like she forced Abigail. She feels like it was non-consensual. And I mean, I can understand how why she felt that way because like that is a really awful situation to be put in where like you didn't know this person was asexual. You guys decide to have asexual, I mean, sexual relations and then you find out that that's not something they want. And then you feel like I forced that person that it wasn't something that they enjoyed. They do, they do talk about it, which I really love. And so like Abigail does make the point of saying she did consent, she had no issue with it, especially because it was something that, while she doesn't want it personally, it's something she doesn't have an issue doing for Gabrielle, of doing those things for Gabrielle. It's more that she doesn't want it done back to her. She doesn't want Gabrielle to do things to her in a sexual way. And I really like that the book clarified that and actually sat down and talked about it, because it is a big worry for some people that like because they're asexual like they can't or won't and it's all individual to the different asexual person 
how they want to go about that. So I guess I'm just per like advocating communication. <laughs> like just please, if you guys are, or in any sexuality, just talk to your partner. Um, but I did really love that that the author took the time to actually talk about that. And spoilers. I do want to say one trigger warning for this book is that um, there is an abusive relationship in it. It is not Abigail and Gabrielle's relationship, but it is Gabrielle and her manager's relationship. And it is a very apparent, it is pretty, I don't know if extremes, but it's just, I mean, even as someone who hasn't gone through that, it was very, like, stressful and, like, hard to kind of deal with. So I do want to let people know that that is in there. It is pretty prevalent throughout the book because that is something Gabrielle is dealing with throughout the majority of the book is her relationship with her manager and how he is being abusive. So just be wary going into it if that is an issue for you, though, that it does have it. Well, those are the two books I ended up reading for the Sapphic Readathon. I was really glad that I decided to do this just because female, female, books with female, there we go, books with female, female relationships was not something I often picked up and I don't really know why. I mean, I really enjoyed the two books. If I could find a fantasy one that had it or like where one of the women is in the military because for some reason that's something I absolutely love, I will have to start picking up more. Well, until my next video, ta-ta for now.